Welcome to the NYC Biweekly Diversity Talk Show. My name is Isis McIntosh and I am your host. Thank you for hanging in there last week. The topic for today's show is gender roles. Now, let us introduce our panelists. Hi, my name is Jeremy uh, and I'm here representing uh, Evolutionary Studies, uh, that club, yes. I'm Sarah Winston. I'm Tenari, I'm representing Shades. And I'm Tremaine Stewart, I'm just uh, representing. <laughs> So um, now we're going to get started on a discussion of a video entitled, Who Pays on the First Date? Let us take a look at the video. Well, it looks really nice on you. Thanks, I just got it today. Oh, you just got it for tonight, huh? Maybe. Here you are. Thanks, guys. Uh, let me. Oh, no, I can. OK. What? Uh, well, I know you're a strong girl, so I don't want to imply anything by just picking up the check. Oh, it, 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 it wouldn't at all. Uh, if you feel like you wanted to pay for tonight, that, that'd be so sweet. But so chauvinistic. I mean, who am I to force social standards on you? Not chauvinistic. Uh, chivalrous. I, I'd be so grateful. That's the thing. I wouldn't want you to feel like you owe me anything. I don't be silly. I just feel like you're an awesome guy. Right, uh, but being that awesome guy, I understand a woman's desire to feel respected and equal. Unless that's not how you feel about yourself. That's very considerate of you, but I also understand that guys like to take care of girls every once in a while. But you're not the type to expect guys to just pay all the time. Not at all, I just thought you wanted to do a nice gesture. Don't you want to be independent? Don't you want to impress me? Why don't you two just split the bill? So what are you doing next Thursday? Ah, uh, sorry. Next Thursday. Nothing, actually. Uh, well then you wanna try this again? Dinner, I, I promise I'll pay. Yeah, I like that. But you don't have to pay. No, I insist. I appreciate it, but I have a job. I can pay for things. I wasn't implying you don't have money, I just wanted to be chivalrous. Don't worry about it. I wanna pay. No, I wanna pay. I thought you were gonna pay? So guys, after watching that amazing video, who do you think should pay on the first date? I'll start with Tremaine. I mean, honestly, unless I really like the girl, then we can split it. If I really like it, I'm trying to, you know, do all that kind of stuff, <laughs> then, then I'll take it and just, you know, call it a thing, and it'll be that. But I think it should be split up. Hmm, I think we've heard from Tremaine. Well, I'd like to pass that a little, a little down now. Okay, so I think that whoever asks should be the one to pay because you're the one suggesting. It's kind of like telling someone, hey, let's go to the movies, and you expect them to pay for you. Like, kind of just, uh, I like to go back to the old times where people would ask each other, like officially ask. So if you ask me, oh, let's go on a date, I'm assuming that you're going to pay. But if I ask you, I have no problem paying. Or we can go Dutch. That's also an option. There are a lot of different possibilities. You could go Dutch. I think that's probably the most useful situation but if one person makes significantly more than the other it's nice if they offer sometimes it's nice if guys offer just because but if another person has like a discount it's good if the person who doesn't have the discount offers to pay over the summer I worked at Starbucks and I got a discount on drinks I went on a date with this person. I was like, hey, I have a discount, so we get like, I think it was like 30% off or something on the drinks. And he's like, oh, cool. And then it would have been nice if you offered, but it wasn't a big deal. Um, so on first dates, I'm usually a big fan of uh, paying Dutch uh, or, you know, splitting the check. Um, but, you know, on, on subsequent dates, I actually um, would, wouldn't mind 
picking up the check. In fact, you know, I have no problem with that. Um, I like it, you know, when, when both parties, um, you know, uh, especially in a, in you know, like while dating, um, picked up, you know, respective bills here and there, you know, along the way. Uh, you know, just nice gestures here and there. But the reason I like to go Dutch on the first date is because if it's terrible the first time, well, then, you know, like you just pay your own way and it's no big deal. Um, and then, you know, you can decide later on um, whether or not you want to do more with this person without a significant dent in your wallet for a bad experience. Now, um, hmm, my opinion. I feel that like what you guys brought up is kind of some, some good arguments, especially since if you realize we do have two females and two males, what I think may have a certain, um, let's base it on chivalry, for, for instance, of who should pay for the first date. So now since hitting on like gender typing, what are some other way gender roles can impact a, 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 excuse me, a romantic relationship? Um, well, I mean, and that I, I think that they can impact a romantic relationship in every single way possible. Really, I mean, uh, different uh, different expectations of different partners will really play a large part in how a relationship forms, especially going in with preconceived notions of of what people are going to do, what people are supposed to do, can have a really big impact. And I feel like it's really important for partners and just people in general to communicate. Uh, really extensively um, when going into something uh, like a relationship or even just like a date, you know, like I would, I would express, you know, like that I would be more comfortable, be com more comfortable, um, you know, splitting the check, you know, from the out, from the get go, rather than having this discussion after dinner and po potentially ruining the experience. So I'm just a really big fan of communication right up front, and it, if they don't like that, then I guess you know they're not the ones for me, and I move on. I agree with Jeremy. Gender roles can affect every aspect of the relationship, like who is more, who's supposed to be more into the relationship, who pays, who's supposed to be more, more emotionally versus physically demonstrative, who cooks, who does household chores, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. whose career is expected to take the back burner, who's supposed to put in more time with the kids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think with romantic relationships, right off the back, gender roles can just hinder it, the relationship starting in general because you're starting off thinking that, oh, I have to cross my legs and I have to flip my hair occasionally and do all these things that are in gender roles that you don't even get to be the real you. And then if you get into that relationship, it is all a lie and a relationship based on a lie is not even a relationship. So it's kind of like it it's a halt right from the start. Um Everybody made very, very, very decent points. Um, when you start to get into gender roles and how a relationship actually starts to progress, it does make things a little awkward. You know, for if we're going to speak um, only on, say, for going back to the first date thing and dates after that, the guys are expected to do a certain thing, the girls are to do a certain thing. There's the flip hair thing. You know, guys always have to, you know, be the, I don't Macho. know, the, yeah, you know. And it's, there's nothing wrong with it at the same time, but it could, you know, make things awkward. Like, for me, I have to walk on the outside of the sidewalk if we're walking down the street. That's decency. Yeah, but at the same time... You get hit by the car first. What if she's bigger than you? Exactly. What if she's bigger than me? Then what do I do? I'm pretty big. If she's bigger than me, then I mean, that'll be a thing. But all in all... Um, the gender roles do, do hinder because people are so concerned with conforming or more so that the other person would be conforming to it. So you impose a lot of pressure on yourself to try and live up to an expectation that you're telling yourself that the other person has. And that's when you know, it makes things very, very awkward. I think that um, Jeff, um, Jeremy has a little something to say. Um, well, right now we're actually really just focusing on heterosexual relationships, and actually I was just wondering, I, I, you know, as the Vice President of Shades, uh, what your opinion on this would be, obviously. Um, you know, I'm not saying, like, you speak for everybody or anything like that, by all means, um, but I, I actually just am curious as to, you know, because we've been all heteronormative over here for a while. I mean, when it comes to that, I would say that general still kind of are incorporated into those because if you, I don't know, it's kind of like saying that, right now, that's kind of like saying that heterosexual relationships are different from 
homosexual relationships because they're not really, if you notice. I mean, just in general with me, speaking personally, they're not any different. I'm a certain way when I'm around a certain type of girl and a certain way when I'm around the other type of girl. If the girl's more feminine, I act more masculine. If the girl's more masculine, I act more feminine. It's kind of just like those generals are instilled in my head. So if I think that you're conforming to the gender role of a male, I'll automatically snap into female role. And it's kind of like me, just myself, how I balance it. And that's why, even though it is extremely, extremely the worst thing you could possibly do, people do that. Like, if you ever see two males walking down the street, they always ask, who's the woman, who's the man? It's just always going to be like that, because that's if what people think. pretty similar? What? I mean, if you're pro... I've seen plenty of relationships where you're both pretty similar. It's just... That's just how is, and then it goes into how your relationship works. Like my relationship, I run things, and that's whether I'm dating a girl or a guy is always gonna be my way all the time. But that's just different for everyone else. I feel like what you guys brought up is something very important and something that I feel like a lot of like the rest of the world tends to forget that people try to put like what you like you were saying, who's the male in the relationship, who's the female in the relationship, and not just are you guys happy with each other. And I feel like that's something that's unfortunate. But um, kind of hinting back onto what Tremaine was saying, because I feel like there was like an underlining argument that people could kind of, kind of go against when he was saying like the whole standing on the outside of the street. And I'd like to take us actually to our next point, which is the, our next video entitled "Chivalry Is Dead." So we'll just take a look at that for a moment. Make sure that she got home safely. This acquaintance of mine got me thinking about the expectations of some women. You'll hear some women complaining that chivalry is dead and that many men no longer go out of their way to do these things for the women they are attracted to or just women in general, actually. And it occurred to me that, yes, these behaviors have become less prevalent and have almost died out. And I think that we can lay their demise directly at the feet of the hard fought and in my mind, morally justified struggles of the feminist movement. In other words, I think this is a good thing. I've come to the conclusion that chivalry is antithetical to the ideals of gender equality because inherent in the idea of chivalry is the idea of condescension to women. I think I first became aware of why I felt so strongly about this in middle school. When I was in eighth grade, I had teachers who made it a classroom policy that if there weren't enough seats to go around in the, in the class, the girls could kick the guys out of their seats and make them sit on the ground. Wherever we went, the girls always went first, and at lunchtime, one of the teachers only allowed the girls into the classroom, maybe one or two guys inside as well, but it was pretty much all girls. I thought this was unfair, and I let that be known. To me, it seemed antithetical to the idea that many of the women I respected and admired had espoused and personified. The idea that women and men were equal and that giving someone special treatment based on their sex was not compatible with the egalitarian ideal we should be trying to reach for. There so, after watching that, I'd like to bring it back to the panelists. But keep in mind, audience, we'd like to hear your input too. So if you do at any point in the show have any type of input that you would like to kind of join in on the conversation with the panelists, please send a message to um, MRC at Binghamton. Okay, so I, not that I completely disagree with what he's saying because it has a lot of validity in it, is that I was just discussing this the other day, is that I don't, I don't really get... Okay, so males are always talking about how females have it easy because they can get into clubs or things like that, but women have to sexualize themselves to get into clubs for free. Like, they have to wear short skirts, crowd tops, and all that. And I feel like it's this video is kind of... I get what he's trying to say, but it's kind of saying that, oh, like women get everything because they're women and they shouldn't feel like they they have to act like they should because they're women like they shouldn't feel entitled because they're women to get these things but i feel like to get some of these things you have to act a certain way like no guy is gonna stand up for you if you're not looking a certain type of way like i feel like a guy would stand up on a train for a woman who's like dressed nicely with high heels and like looking very feminine than someone who is more masculine in their approach, like wearing baggy jeans or whatever, he wouldn't stand for her. But a woman like that, he would. Because you have to portray yourself in a certain feminine way to get those um, entitlements. Cause I feel like he was trying to say like women are entitled to these things and that's unfair and boohoo me because I'm a guy. Like I felt that that's what was being portrayed in the video. But. I agree with you and that makes sense. I also think that the person that made the video I've, a lot of their points make sense but 
Chivalry and gender egalitarianism aren't necessarily at odds. You can be romantic and do nice things for someone regardless of your gender or how the relationship is set up. If And also, doing nice things for people doesn't necessarily have to be tied to anything romantic. If someone has a heavy package, I'm going to hold the door for them because that's just being polite. And if someone holds the door for me in the dining hall, I don't expect them to do it. And also, I'm not thinking that they're doing it because they think less of me because I'm a woman. I just think, oh, this person's being a decent human being. They're holding the door for me. Like, I hold the door for people who have stuff or whatever. And just being a nice person and doing things for other humans, whether or not you're in a romantic relationship with them, is a good thing to do. Uh, I want to agree with everything that Sarah said, actually, and I, I would also like to point out the fact that this is a really contested and hot topic, and I certainly don't have um, appropriate answers, I guess, but I will, I, I've actually kind of struggled with this one myself. Enjoy your cop-out, it's fine. I, I, no, no, I'm, I, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally answer it. I'm going to be legit about it, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my honest opinion and stuff and whatnot. All right. Um... <sighs> All right, so let me let me formulate for a second. Okay, so uh, when it comes to chivalry, um, I think that I think that you had some really good points as well. I think that um, I think that chivalry itself um, comes with an ideal of that fact that like men have to protect women, men have to um, men have to do things for women uh, just based on the fact that they're women, protect their sexuality, protect their identities, and that's wrong, um, you know, as a whole because, um, well, I mean, you know, at least for women who don't consent to those types of things, you know, I mean, like, if, if people consent to things, I'm all for it, whatever, but just in this fact of, like, you know, um, if if a man holds a door open for a woman because she's a woman, I disagree with that versus holding it open because she's a human being and helping them. When it comes to um, when it comes to like like the ideal of chivalry, like knighthoods, I just want like knights and shining armor. I just want to point out the fact that knights were really 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 awful rapey people, and they shouldn't <laughs> be looked for as ideals or standards by any means. I, mean, I, I just, it's, it's a fairy tale life. It just, you know, chivalry, the code of honor and anything just should never be followed ever if you're looking at, you know, the Knights Templar. Um, but the, the just, just in terms of equality, I would love to see gender equality. It's never going to happen in my opinion. I think it's a great ideal that we should strive for just because both sexes, I'm sorry, all genders, excuse me, all genders um, should have, should be equal, be treated equal and have equal representation. Um, but I mean, people are always going to do things for those that, you know, they're sexually attracted to more so that they're sexually attracted to than other people and since men have more power in society um they're going to use it to you know get what they want and if that's you know a woman then i mean what better way than using that power to show them that you know that you can um uh, do you know that you can be nice to them you're using your power for their benefit and therefore they should be appreciative and offer you their sexual services which is <laughs> what i'm saying is you know is like is going on in the subliminal sense not saying that women should actually do that please all right like i'm i'm just just pointing out how i see things in society by all means you know argue with me at a later date <laughs> so far equal sex time <laughs> Okay, okay. I was trying my best to not say anything to that, but I have something to say. Let's start originally um, when you were talking about, I feel like three things were really hit on that we kind of mix up, and I feel like it's unfortunate. I think he hit upon um, kind of the difference between gender equality, also division of roles, as well as just doing something because you feel like it should be done. So when it comes to gender equality, I constantly hear, we're going to get a little bit into like the feminist aspect. I feel that, for instance, if I'm going out on a date and someone offers me like, hey, this is what I, I want to do, I'm not going to 100% expect, but I would like, I am giving you my time, and if you are to pay for the date, that
that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that is showing me, okay, that you are more so interested. You know what I mean? But I feel like sometimes it's confused that because females are, especially in today's time, are constantly saying, we need to be equal, we need to be equal, that people, or specifically males, use that as an excuse to say, well, then I don't have to do this for you because aren't we all equal? So let's say if I'm struggling with a box, like I, my best friend is a male, and he jokes about it all the time, but it just shows, like, um, I'll be holding a box, and I'm like, Calvin, help me. And he'll be like, aren't you guys fighting for gender equality? You, you're strong. You got this. And it's like, Mm, I'm reaching out for help. So if you were a female, I would have still asked you to help me at that point. And I feel that sometimes it's a difference between feeling like you're entitled to something and feeling like you just command a certain amount of respect. So let's say if I'm walking and I need help and someone opens the door for me, whether you're a female or male, I feel like that's just because they see, okay, I'm a human being and I also need help getting through the door versus that male did not hold the door for me. Mm, he just got X off my list. You know what I mean? I think that I think that um, I probably didn't explain what I meant properly enough, and believe me, I, I things are formulating in my head, and you know I'm I don't I don't even know, um, but but I think that you know just the fact that like men do have a certain amount of power and privilege in society, True. and the fact of the matter is like the feminist movement is threatening that and has threatened you know like what has been, um, what has been true about men for centuries really you know in the western world is that men are more powerful than women men decide you know this and that um and the fact that like feminists are um are demanding equality i disagree with a lot of the ways that they're doing it and how they go about it but the fact of the matter is like um when you're under th attack or when you're threatened, you're more likely to respond with um, aggression, especially when you're told that you're supposed to be more aggressive, you know, your entire life as men are told. Um, so that's, I guess, how I see a lot of times, um, or that's where I see men's anger and response coming from to feminism. I mean, some of it's legit, a lot of it's not, but hey. So I'd like to move us forward because, again, you hit upon a very strong point. And I feel that you may have not meant to do this, but the kind of separation between men and feminists. And I feel that that should not be. And now pretty much moving forward, I feel like we'll all be able to get on the same page. Um, there is a, a wonderful poet. Her name is Chimamandu Adichie. And she is a renowned author and feminist who grew up in Nigeria. She speaks about the topic of gender roles through a video entitled, we should all be feminists. So let's just take a little look at that for a moment. Audience, enjoy. Hells for the better. Gender matters everywhere in the world, but I want to focus on Nigeria and on Africa in general because it is where I know and because it is where my heart is. And I would like today to ask that we begin to dream about and plan for a different world, a fairer world. A world of happier men and happier women who are truer to themselves. And this is how to start. We must raise our daughters differently. We must also raise our sons differently. We do a great disservice to boys in how we raise them. We stifle the humanity of boys. We define masculinity in a very narrow way. Masculinity becomes this hard, small cage, and we put boys inside the cage. We teach boys to be afraid of fear. We teach boys to be afraid of weakness, of vulnerability. We teach them to mask their true selves because they have to be, in Nigeria speak, hard man. <laughs> in secondary school, a boy and a girl, both of them teenagers, both of them with the same amount of pocket money, would go out and that the boy would be expected always to pay to prove his masculinity. And yet we wonder why boys are more likely to steal money from their parents. What if both boys and girls were raised not to link masculinity with money? What if their attitude was not the boy has to pay, but rather whoever has more should pay? Now, of course, because of their historical advantage, it is mostly men who will have more today. But if we start raising children differently, then in 50 years, in 100 years, boys will no longer have the pressure of having to prove this masculinity. But by far the worst thing we do to males by making them feel that they have to be hard is that we leave them with very fragile egos. The more hard man 
a man feels compelled to be, the weaker his ego is. And then we do a much greater disservice to girls because we raise them to cater to the fragile egos of men. We teach girls to shrink themselves, to make themselves smaller. We say to girls, you can have ambition, but not too much. <laughs> you should aim to be successful, but not too successful. Otherwise, you will threaten the man. If you are the breadwinner in your relationship with a man, you have to pretend that you're not, especially in public. Otherwise, you will emasculate him. But what if we question the premise itself? Why should a woman's success be a threat to a man? What if we decide to simply dispose of that word? And I don't think there's an English word I dislike more than emasculation. So, audience, I know that some of you may have actually seen the clip that we just shown by Chimamandu Adichie. And some of you may say, wait a second, wasn't that in the Beyonce video? Yes. Now, we're going to actually have some discussion on it. Tremaine? I completely agree with everything she was saying. Um, you know, being a male, and uh, I've come from a family of two brothers, I'm in the middle, and all, like, everything we've been really taught is, you know, tough guys hide their feelings, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you, we have to learn how to do this, learn how to basically do everything to try and show that we are guys. And growing up with, um, brothers you really have to kind of I'm not the weak one you're the weak one that's my playful you know you got to really do a, a lot of things and it really does uh spill over into when you're dealing with the female because then you feel that right if we're going out and I see a bunch of dudes who I know will think that my girl's attractive I'll pull her closer to kind of you know show all right guys chill out this is all me you, you know you know what I'm saying and it's it's an interesting thing that happens because if you really look at it, there's no real reason to do that in the sense that if I'm, if I feel a certain type of way about me and me and this girl are, you know, going well, then I sh don't really have to, you know, put on this, Facade. I don't want to, yeah, that, all right, you know, this is me because I know that they'll try and attack unless I show that I'm some type of alpha male in the situation and get all, you know, down and beat my chest and all, <laughs> all that kind of extra stuff. Um, and that's a, a thing that should change. It, it, it really should change. And the point that she made about the, the, uh, the females, I'm going to raise all my daughters, if I have daughters, to be their own independent. Like, it, if they want to play with dolls, that would be cool. But if they want to go outside and play soccer and do that, that would be cool too, only because I know the uh, true power of, uh, in this sense, being free to choose which side you want to play. And if they want to be tough and own all the money and have a husband that stays home and cooks, then you know that's what they want to do. If, if, the, if it works for them, then by all means. I'm not going to overimpose, all right, you can't do this because you're a girl. You can't do this because you're a boy. That's when you know things get awkward, in my opinion. Um, I think she brought up, like, my favorite point that she brought up was, like, how fragile, like, the stronger the male, the fragile they are. Yes, you, men in Binghamton <laughs> University, yes, I am speaking to you. Because I see this every day. I see it in a lot of the males, especially in my community, in the minority community, that their egos are all the way up here, but I know on the inside they're, like, quick to break because if some girl doesn't pay attention to them at the party or they'll have a whole bunch of girls and when they all find out about them, it just goes haywire and they're like, they're quick to, they're qu uh, someone who's weak to me is quick to demolish someone else to save their themselves because they're not strong enough to hold themselves up when someone is telling them something about themselves. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a really important point because um, people have a lot of ideas about feminism, but I think feminism holds a lot of other elements into it, not just about the female and her power, because females, everyone knows that females are really powerful, but it's also the other things that bring them down, which are males and other, you know, aspects of society that play into feminism. And I thought it was just a really great point because I feel that, like, gender roles play into that, and just in general, like, how society is set up that 
we we set the standard and we keep it pushing because if you ever see a guy cry, I think if we saw a guy crying in the marketplace, everyone would have a fit. Like, what is happening? Why is he crying? But if you see a female crying, someone is quick to go and be like, are you okay? Do you want to go to the counseling center? But no one's there holding his hand because his hand is strong. He doesn't need another hand to hold it. And that just goes into a lot of things. So I thought that was like a really great point. I'm going to address what you said first, and then I'm going to go into what the video is discussing and then bring in some of my own experience. What you're saying with the marketplace, I think if people saw a girl crying in the marketplace, they'd be like, oh, whatever, she's a girl. But if someone saw a guy crying in the marketplace, they'd go, whoa, this is like something exotic. Guys don't cry. And that leads into the this idea that the person in the video brought up of the fragility of masculinity and the way at least our society is structured there are way more rules and guidelines and regulations she was talking about the box governing masculinity comparatively than femininity and so if you transgress a rule of masculinity like if you move your wrists a little bit not like whoa but I guess the way I'm doing, when you speak, it's like, what's up with that guy? But if you're a girl and you have short hair, you're like, oh, whatever. She's cool. She has short hair. And going into just sort of my own experience, remember that was on the, the question sheet? Mm -hmm. In my family, we both sort of conform and, like, challenge gender norms like our own ways like my mom she's the breadwinner but she also is the person like expected to like support and nurture people and like when there's something at the bottom of the stairs needs to be brought up or laundry or whatever it's sort of like default to my mom I mean my dad does it also but it's just sort of like an implicit like expectation that my mom will do it Right now, my dad is a stay-at-home dad, and he does a lot of the chores and stuff and went and managing the house and driving people around. And when I was little, after my mom finished her maternity leave, my dad took care of me and brought me to the park and stuff. But then at another point, my mom had a more senior position, but then turned it down for a more part-time thing so she could take care of my brother and me. So my parents have flip-flopped the gender roles throughout my life. So as we move, I just want to just throw out another question. In. What ways can people decrease gender stereotyping and address issues of inequality? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's another thing, like towards the end, she really hit on in the video. Uh, can, you, can you just repeat that question Not one more time? Not a problem. In what ways can people help decrease gender stereotyping and address issues of inequality? Okay. Um, I think I can probably touch on both questions uh, pretty effectively. Um, so, uh, Trey, you were talking about how, you know, you'll hold a, a girl close, uh, you know, when there's a group of guys or when there's another guy who might be a potential threat, you know, and trying to show you more alpha. Uh, that's actually a phenomenon called mate guarding, and it's really, really common. Um, it's actually just, like, what men do um, just because like evolutionarily we just don't want to be cuckolded so we're just like hey back off or I will hurt you she's mine she's my property etc you know not uh, you know evolutionary perspective is not is not is it doesn't it, it doesn't equate I'm sorry I'm sorry it doesn't equate to like the moral or right thing to do I want to be very clear it's just the tendencies and trying to explain them you know and uh, applying them to humans but there is cultural variation there is a lot of of other variables and it's not you know it's not exact every single time nor is it you know applicable in every single case you know there are always exceptions but Jeremy I would okay. like to point out that female do that do, do that too. oh no absolutely like, you absolutely now, like, yeah social media you'll see females like this is my man picture like you know what i mean like just yeah. so that way everyone else knows mm -hmm. So I feel yeah. like it, it goes hand well, in hand. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because because actually, um, like uh, a f a, another phenomenon of when it comes to cheating is the fact that um, when uh, two women are like um, when when uh, something that has been told to me, excuse me, um, is that when two women are actually. Uh, I'm sorry, when, when a woman is dating a man and another woman sleeps with their man, oftentimes they actually get very mad at the other woman because they expect, like, she should have known better. 
that's something that's been told to me. No, I don't. It's code. It's girls' code. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So so you know like so you guys have your own because because you know the man is very important for resources and you know and acquiring uh, those resources for the offspring for you know the woman herself and if he's off giving his resources and time to another woman or other offspring then your own offspring and your own resources are negatively affected by that. So you want it all for yourself. So therefore, you know, you guard your male when you found a really good one, mm -hmm. um, evolutionarily speaking. Uh, but but um, so when it comes to this uh, issue of uh, gender roles and uh, gender stereotypes and, uh, you know, things we can do to reduce them, um, I mean, something we can do to reduce them, I think, is it's those everyday interactions, really, that uh, go on. It's also, you know, it's definitely raising your children. Um, it's definitely trying to encourage a, um, a broader perspective, a greater um, sense of um, equality, of acceptance, of tolerance in your children. Uh, and teaching them, you know, telling them never, you know, I, I really dislike it when people tell their kids, um, you know, be strong, be a man, grow a pair, do this, do that. Really, really damaging to them because masculinity is extremely fragile. Masculinity is extremely uh, transient. It's, you know, I'm really lucky that I've uh, not grown up in a household where I was expect even though I did grow up with two older brothers. I wasn't really expected to act like a man. Um, I've dealt with anger issues my entire life, though. Um, but, you know, I've been in therapy for a year and a half, and I can say I can't even get angry anymore, actually. It's really weird. Um, but uh, in terms of just addressing uh, and how to make things more equal, um, recommendation is um, just everyday actions, little things here and there, having these types of heart-to-hearts with friends and just, you know, trying to educate those around you. I like totally agree in that aspect because I grew up with five brothers. Like I only grew up around men, but I still have that. Like I won't text a guy first. I do all those things, and I feel like that's just kind of like that goes to show you that even though I was surrounded by men, I've only had like until I came to college, I never really hung out with girls or females at all. And it's kind of like it goes to show you how serious your whole society just has an impact on what you think. And I think that it start it literally starts with you. Because even with me and myself, like, when my friends will tell me, no, try this, try, like, talking to the person first or doing these things that are not in my role that I feel like are in my role. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm a human, I should come to gender roles all the time. And when my friends tell me to do it, at first I'm apprehensive, but then I go and I try it. And then some, most of the times the results are good. And I think it starts with you and then the education. I feel like education, especially being a part of Shays, education is key. Because when someone says, like, a homophobic um, comment? a remark or comment, mm -hmm. I'm, I never resort to anger because that doesn't help because that person's already angry that you're a homosexual and you're around them. <laughs> so anger and anger is just only going to combat each other and move off. But if you're calm and you explain to them and try to educate them that maybe they don't know, you don't know how they grew up or any of that thing, all, all those things, I feel like education is a big thing. People don't take the time to talk to people anymore. It's kind of like, oh, I'm done with you, goodbye. Because mm -hmm. you can do that, because you can go on your phone instead of listening to the idiot who's talking about um, how they hate gay people or something like that. It's just taking the time in you and in others. Um, I'm a... Uh, delve into my past real quick. I am a Jamaican, so I have a lot of that cultural background. Um, and when it comes to gender roles, maybe it's because this is how I was raised, but I still feel like certain things should be done by the males and certain things should be done by females. And um, when it comes to how would you uh, like make that go away when it comes to those roles, it gets a little weird, because as a kid, you know, the, the boy, we had to do all the, like, grunt work. So I had to go and take out the goats and go build the fence for the cows and, you know, do all this extra stuff. And all of my girl cousins would be inside cleaning and cooking, things of that nature. They didn't like to so much be outside and go take the goats. I ain't like to clean and, <laughs> and, and like cooking stuff. So there are certain things that I'm not sure how in entirely we would get around those things because I don't know any girls that are quick to pick up a hammer. I'm quick to pick up a hammer because, see, and that's a rarity, though, if, if you really think about it. Um, but as people get older, you know, they become more uh, 
logically minded and they can start choosing you know how they want to kind of move about things and that's when it can really be d disbanded but at a younger age it's a little uh weird in my opinion although it shouldn't be because at the same time you should let your daughter go out and play with the goats and go play with them if you really wanted to but i guess that just goes into uh i would say society and our cultural um really upbringings perpetuating it throughout you know um all the generations so in order to get past that we'd really have to start with you know how you would raise your children I have like a quick theory, sorry. Like, oh, so I have a quick theory about kind of what you talked about. I feel like why men or like bo boys are like sent out to do the grunt work, as you would put it, and um, females are to do the housework, because it instills the idea that, because in general, if you're not thinking about who's doing the job, if someone tells, tells you, okay, so you have someone cleaning the, washing the dishes and someone um, building a fence, which job is harder? The fence. What, who's doing it? The male. So it already instills, I'm more powerful than you because I get to do the hard work, and I'm the hardworking one, so I deserve more. It already instills that in just those little things, but that's like my little okay. conspiracy theory. Well, I actually feel a little bit different. You can actually try to either back me up or refute me on this from like coming from an evolutionary standpoint. But I actually heard like actually like in um, prehistoric times, the way that it was just set up was just that for some reason like males went out and like killed the cattle or went hunting while the females would be the ones to cook it. But at that time, it wasn't you do this and only your gender can do this. It was just more so... I'm complimenting, like, we want food on the table at the end of the night. Like, you know what I mean? And I feel like because this has happened for so many generations, it has been pushed aside that only males can do this. You understand? So it goes from, I can see why females would then say, okay, well, I'm going to cook. Or if I'm going to be home all day, there should be certain things that should be done, regardless of who it is. And at one point, since it was with our nuclear society with America, since it was males who tended to be the ones out there bringing in the money, it's only right that whoever is home should be doing what needs to be done around the house. And I feel like we've got so caught up in the, excuse me, so caught up in who's doing the job that we forget that the job needs to be done regardless. And like when you were talking about Trey, like um, actually like them going out and actually like building the fence or doing the dishes, I feel like personally it is how you raise your child and that all children should be taken out to do that. But whoever does it the best, that's how kind of you're going to decide who's going to stick with this. So for instance, growing up, my sisters loved to do hair. I wasn't a big haired person, but it was instilled in me by the time I was about 13 that ISIS, if you don't learn how to do hair, when you get when you grow up and you have a child, who's going to do your daughter's hair? So it's like, okay, I'll pick it up. But it wasn't the first thing that I cleaned to. First thing that I cleaned to was basketball. So I feel like as long as both, like regardless of gender, you're introduced to it, then we should stop promoting like only males do this, only females do this, and more so, hey, it needs to get done. Who's going to who's gonna jump on top of this? Mm -hmm. Sarah? Sure. Uh, some ways to educate and get around this are education, I just said, and reading and listening to other people and having these kinds of discussions. And with regards to gender roles, again, it can be who does it best and who you want to do the job with. And societal stuff also and when you have children it's good to have them experience a lot of different kinds of things and have them do different tasks it's sort of like with the gen eds here it's like okay even though you're a business major you should still take liberal arts courses just because and like going back to gender roles my friend Sharon she's just really good at stereotypically male things she like is great with cars fixing things she's really strong and so when stuff breaks in my house and my neither of my parents know how to do it we're like hey let's call Sharon so then she comes over and she fixes it one time the window was broken she fixed it that was awesome <laughs> Uh, well, I just want to point out the fact that I'm I'm not really that stereotypically male in a lot of ways. Like, just the fact that, like, I could give a damn about sports and cars. Just as long as it runs, you know, as long as my car runs, I don't really care. Right? Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't I don't need to know, 
you know, I don't need to know details or anything like that. I don't need. I if, I I can't even fix a tire probably. Um, uh, but um, just to answer you on evolutionary perspective, actually, the funny part is like men are always like, yeah, men are the hunters and women are the <laughs> gatherers, and you know, like we went out and got, you know, we went out and like fetched the literal metaphorical bacon, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Uh, the fact of the matter is, like, like um, there was, like, in egalitarian societies, like, it's more of a cultural thing that, like, when it, when it does happen that men go out and, you know, hunt. But the fact is that, like, it's not, like, it is a huge part of the culture and society, but it's also, like, women hunt, too, and... Uh, if you actually read in books, the fact like like they'll call fishing hunting when men do it, but they'll call it gathering when women do it. What's up with that, right? And like eighty five percent of their resources, if not ninety percent of all food resources that these societies have, come from gathering. Anyways, yeah, like the women are really the ones putting the food on the table. Men just provide some extra protein and some some other animal products that can be used um, for other you know parts of their lifestyle. You no. That. Well, uh, yeah. A lot of times they actually had to pursue the the animal for like days at a time, run it down to exhaustion, poison it, and, or kill it then, and then bring it back. Yeah. Um. So it was never really like it's never really been like you know like yeah we're omnivores, but primarily we had like a mostly vegetarian diet, if you will, before. Um, yeah. yeah, paleo. Exactly. Yeah. Um, before uh you know the dawn of time if you will um yeah so just um I'm, i don't really remember what the question was but i mean i i guess i'm done so no, it's fine yeah. so now at this point audience we thank you for joining us but we're kind of going to segue to our last portion of this actual this panelist um we're going to go to our last video it is a trailer from a film called girl rising now this is a documentary it features nine girls from around the world who fight for an education and the obstacles pretty much that were in their past as females. So we're just gonna take a, a minute to look at that and then we'll be right back. Tonight, one of the bravest girls in the world. Malala Yousafzai became renowned for demanding girls be given the right to education. Shot in the head on her school bus. She was a student who wanted to learn, but now she's fighting to live. Come on, skin and love just last the I was 11 years old when my father arranged for me to be married. I had heard about the thousands of girls sold to men in those places. I can't really talk about everything that happened to me here. But I will never forget. We have come to this house, the house of her master, to say, you must set her free. Regrets collect like old friends, here to relive your darkest moments. I can see no way, I can see no way. And all of the goods come out to play. There is no miracle here, just a girl with dreams. I will read, I will study, I will learn. If you try to stop me, I will just try harder. If you stop me, there will be other girls who rise up and take my place. I am change. I am my own master now. feel as though I have power. Now there's nothing to stop. I feel I can do anything. We thank you, audience, for watching our last film trailer for the film Girl Rising. And we thank you, panelists, for being here and offering your awesome, awesome, awesome perspectives on this topic. 
Now, please stay tuned for the next show.